We continue to make a conversation about what should inform believers. Somebody who calls himself a Christian or a believer, born again. As we go to vote, it's my expectation and maybe an assumption, it may not be based on reality or facts, that you as a believer are informed by matters of morality that are so dear to you. When we think about the issues that goes on in our country right now, we know too well that there are politicians who do not deserve anybody's vote. It's shocking that uh, even somebody who would have been impeached because of they were found either culpable of corrupt deeds, can decide to offer themselves for elections and maybe even change their location or even try to go to the same place. I want to make a passionate appeal. I know that we can say we don't have people who are perfect, and sure enough, even you and I may not be perfect, but there are certain qualities that can be evident and be seen in people to prove there are people, they, are, they, they, they honor the Lord. When we talk about Jesus himself, we define him as the one who is the Lord of our creation and the church. All things were made by him and for him. There, you know, there's no domain over which he does not rule. In every home, in every hall of power, Christ has ultimate jurisdiction. But the only way that Christ will have that ultimate jurisdiction is because those who are his ambassadors, because Jesus in person will not come to cast his vote in Kenya or in America or in anywhere around the world. It is people who call themselves Christians, who carry that identity. They are the only ones who can be able to express uh, what they believe through their votes. In the book of Daniel 7.14, we, 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 we appreciate Daniel celebrating God and saying he, that, that God is the one who gives, who has authority, glory, and sovereign power, and that all nations and peoples, every language, should worship him because his dominion is an everlasting dominion that will never pass away. And his kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. And we need to appreciate that. And I keep saying, why should Christians abandon the public square and remove themselves from the, from the world of politics? I understand why many Christians feel like withdrawing, and there are fair arguments for doing so. But I want to contend that if Jesus is the Lord of our all, if governments are put in praise by God for the well-being of the society, then at least some Christians should remain active in politics and in societal government. And I keep urging, and I still pray that even we, as we look, look through the records of those who are presenting themselves, that we'll find people who are committed Christians, who we can vote for. And I've said this clearly. If I know somebody is a believer, regardless, if I know they are sincere believers, regardless of what party they are standing for, that one can get my vote. This idea of saying that you have to vote all the six from one party, I have a problem with that, a problem with that. It is important for us to think about the character quality of an individual, a person who knows when they enter that office, 
they will not just be there for their own stomachs, for their selfish interest, but they'll be there because they want to advance the interest of the population that put them there. And like I said earlier, in some of the programming before, we, are, we had a reference of a man that ruled us for 10 years, a person who occupied spaces in the public square for more than, I think he was talking about half a century, at least for 50 years, maybe plus. And for all the time that he, he occupied those positions, nobody can point at him accusing him of any corrupt deed or abuse of power. May God raise leaders in our country as we go to vote in August 9, 2022. Raise leaders, even if they cannot be exactly measured up to his standards, but who are close to what he stood for, so that this country once again can enjoy leadership that worries about the interests of the people. And let's pray oh, that even the balance of the campaign time will not be characterized by hate speech, but there can be responsible conversation. And let's pray that Kenyans, Kenyan youth will not be weaponized by politicians to fight their opponents. Let's pray that God will give us peace as we go to the elections, during the elections, and even after the elections, for his glory and praise. Lord, we thank you for your love, for your faithfulness, and we trust that you love this country. Thank you for the prayer caravan that is, uh, that is on at the time in which this program goes to air. Pray for protection and favor upon all those participating, and we pray that your name be glorified, and that, dear Father, the soul of this nation will be secured because men and women have chosen to pray and trust you for intervention for peace in Jesus' name. Amen.